So last week I got a lot of comments that said that they wanted to learn uh, how I edit my photos for Instagram or Facebook. So in this video I'll show you guys how my process looks like. It might be amateur like but the result is great because here at the left of the screen you can see a photo which is not edited and at the right of the screen you see a photo that is edited. And how to do this I'm going to teach you right now so I'm going to jump into my computer. So the first thing you want to do is open Adobe Lightroom. This is the program I use to edit and this is used by the biggest photographers, professional people in the world so I highly suggest buying this it costs money yes and there are also free opportunities but if you're really serious about growing a business and I don't know just making something out of your own then consider investing in this kind of stuff because this is obviously the best investment you can make uh, a great platform which I use is Adobe Creative Cloud which gives you all the programs for around 60 bucks a month uh, and if you're a student it's only 20 bucks a month it, it does sound like a lot of money but it's definitely worth it so let's go to Lightroom open it up I think there's also a free version so you can check it out uh, but you open it up and once you've opened it up we want to import the photo we took which we want to edit so here you click on import and then after the import you see a photo here and I want to import the photo which is not edited. Uh, it's going to import now. So once your photo is here in the library you can click on it and then go to develop and this is where all the magic will happen. Uh, don't get scared with all the buttons, I'll teach you in a minute and it's not that hard uh, but yeah. Usually what I do, I bought some packs uh, which have some settings in them uh, which makes photos look good just for quick stuff. Uh, so as you can see here I have some packs and once you go over them you see different styles on the photo. But for now we're going to do the editing ourselves because we want to learn how to do it so let's start with this. So the first thing you will do is go down to the bottom. Uh, go to transform and click on level What this will do is it will drag the photo out so that it's horizontal in a straight line It just looks better. So that's the first thing I do usually and Then I go back up and then what I do is I'll hit the exposure button first and you can see here You can make it darker. You can make it lighter if you have a really underexposed photo, you can still save it by just using this slider. And what I do is I try to find a sweet spot which would look good. I don't want it to be too light, maybe like this for now. Then I go over to the contrast and the contrast. You can see there's a huge difference as well if you keep dragging it. So if we go back to zero, I think a little bit of contrast is good set it at 5 now and usually what I do then is I go play with the temperatures uh, you can make uh, pictures a lot warmer you can make pictures a lot colder and usually what I like to use is make them a bit colder maybe like this and you can do the same with this button make it a bit more greener since we're in a forest let's say minus 7 so this is what it looks like now. Then we go to the highlights. The highlights I like to bring down a bit so that in the sky you'll get a lot more leaves coming back. If you see the difference, you see the leaves are there better once I drag this slider to the left and if I drag it to the right, the detail is going to yeah, get lost. So what I like to do here, since it is small detail, uh, I want minus 20 and then with shadows it's kind of the same thing you can bring detail back and I like a bit of dark tones as well so let's do it minus 15 same with whites you can bring it up you can bring it down I like to bring it up a bit because then the orange color will get popped up more let's go with 70 then blacks 
I really like to bring the blacks down a lot because you can you can see what a huge difference it makes. If you see minus 80 right now, and if I bring it back to zero, that's a huge difference. So minus 75. I really like it. That's my personal yeah sweet spot. Maybe minus 70 a bit less in this photo. This looks good. All right. So now that we've done this, we go to clarity. And clarity, you can see what it does to the photo as well. It brings a lot of yeah, clarity <laughs> to the photo. Uh, and if I bring it down, it's, it's it gets really vague. But I really like the detail. So I always bring this up a little. Maybe to around 45. Uh, and then we go to dehaze. And we can make the photo a bit darker as well or a bit lighter. Well, the light, you will lose your color, which I really don't want. So I bring it up just a little bit, maybe plus 10, no, plus 5. This looks pretty decent. All right. Uh, then vibrance. You can change the color as well here. Lose some color. Uh, I'll just leave it at zero for now and saturation this is really a strong uh, thing to edit so I don't really use this that much but you can bring up the colors in general uh, which has a huge effect but you can also do it for just general uh, places so if you go to this brush brush tool at the right corner I can also click on a certain area so let's say this yellowish uh, bush and I click on it now what it does is only this area will get affected so I can drag the saturation out and you'll see it get grayed out if I drag it up it will become more yellow so you can also play with those colors and it's a bit more advanced but still it's, it's really nice if you ever see something really underexposed you see like a nice light tower which is red in the far back uh, what you can do is just get your brush on there, uh, bring up the reds and it will pop out in the photo as well. So that's really nice to do. But for now I won't leave this edit, so I'll delete it. Alright. So then we go down and we find here tone curves. Uh, usually what you want to do here and which most professionals do as well uh, is create sort of like an S form so if you just drag this down a little maybe to the right a bit and then drag this up a little there we go there we go so it's starting to get more like an S form uh, but yeah you see the point once we done that then actually the fun part happens which I really like a lot if you have a certain grid on Instagram or on Facebook uh, where you like to use only blues or only yellows or only oranges uh, you can change colors here so let's say you have a red a light tower we talked about you can make it purple or you can make it green or anything you like or just change the color a bit so it matches your other red uh, colored photo so what you do here is you see all these color buttons and you can change them all so obviously we have a lot of orange here so the button orange we can drag this and make things yellow or we can make things more orange or kind of like reddish so it will get more red but for now this is a really strong Thing. so I want to be a little bit more orange you can drag the saturation up or down as well and as we know saturation is the color uh, strength drag it up a little and then the luminance you can make it a bit darker or a bit lighter for now I like a bit dark so that we got here also what we see here is we have a lot of yellows and greens and maybe I want these yellows to become orange as well or I want them to be more green and as I can see I like the variety of colors so a bit more green would be nice 
and drag the color out a little so it, it almost gets like a sort of snowy ef effect like it, it's becoming more winter if you understand what I mean if we look at this this is definitely fall once I drag this down more and more it becomes more winter which I like more so let's keep this as minus 50 but then again this is a creative process just as painting or creating a rap song or whatever creative process you do so it's definitely up to you what you like to create so I like this kind of style but you can create your own style and that's the fun part about this and that's why photo editing is so important because you can really let your own style come out of your photos which is really cool so now we've done this I think maybe a bit green can be added as well maybe like mm, I think this is pretty cool and then saturation I can bring it up or I can bring it down it doesn't do a lot and the luminance yeah I think up a little so you get the more of like snowy effect there we go then we go down uh, you can also change some advanced stuff here as well. Let's say you have a lot of pixels. It's called grain in your photos uh, because it maybe was really dark. Um, you can change the noise here. Uh, I suggest you to look that up on YouTube because this picture is not really grainy. Uh, but yeah, you can do a lot in this program to actually correct the photo. And once you've done that, if you want, you can also create a, uh, a vignette, which is white, or maybe make it a bit black. Uh, but I usually don't like to do this because I just want to bring my whole photo uh, out. Maybe just a little bit on the edges, minus two or something. So now we got this, all right? So then what I usually do, a lot of people start cropping uh, inside uh, Lightroom. I don't really like to do this, instead what I do is I use Photoshop as well. So I right click this and then I say edit in and I'll go to Photoshop. Also uh, if you don't have Photoshop and only this, uh, what you can do uh, is just export this photo or start cropping here with this tool. Um, and then you can create the Instagram uh, size you want and what that Instagram size is I'll explain in the Photoshop editor right now so now that it opened up right here uh, we see Photoshop which is really different but for this uh, it can get really advanced so just play back this video to really understand it but what I do here first is I want to crop this photo to Instagram size so I can hit C or either I can click here on this icon uh, in, in the sidebar. And as you can see here, we can start cropping. And what I know is Instagram has an aspect ratio, which is called of four by five. So this is a perfect formats for watching on phone, mobile. Once we've done that, we can drag it up or down. Let's say I want I want my feet to be on there so I'll go to the bottom then hit enter all right um, and here we got the cropped Instagram picture so now that we've done this uh, what I want to do is I want to bring more sharpness to uh, myself like uh, I want to myself to pop out of the photo and this is where the advanced stop stuff happens uh, what I usually do is I create a copy so you can either uh, Command C or Control C uh, and then paste it or you can click on alt or for MacBooks It's option and then drag Another one above this layer. This is where your layers are displayed. So now we made a copy of these two uh, photos So what I want to do now is I want to add sharpness and how to add sharpness First, I have to go to Filter and then click on Convert to Smart Filters. This will make it a smart object. You don't really have to understand what it does, but you need that in order to complete the process. 
So click on that. And then we have a smart object of this photo. And my computer is so slow because I'm recording and I have Lightroom open and Photoshop. So it's really, really slow. But yeah, now this is a smart object. And what we want to do now is again, go to filter, go to other, click on high pass. Again, you don't have to know what the names are. Just watch this video and actually copy this process. Uh, but what you want to do here is you want to drag this bar up until you start to see my body a bit like detail so as you can see here my body is returning a little so I think 1.5 is a good one you just want to see the detail then you click on OK and then in this little section as well you want to hit over to this filter it says normal now and you go to overlay so now this whole picture has been sharpened. But what I said, I only want my body to be sharpened. So I want to remove the sharpness at this forest area. So how Photoshop works is you can create a, a search called clipping mask, which is here. Click on this little icon and you have a clipping mask. And to explain this, uh, you see a white uh, block here. This white indicates the places of the photo uh, which get sharpened. So the whole screen is white, so everything is sharpened. So what we want to do now is check our color here and it should be on black. And black says I don't want this place, place to be sharpened. That's generally how a clipping mask works. So what we want to do, we want to have a black paintbrush and start painting over the areas I don't want to have sharpness and once I do that you can see a bit of color returning as well it's really hard to see maybe if I zoom in you can really see it but it starts to lose it gets a bit less sharp it just starts to look better uh, and that's generally what I do if you have a portrait so a photo of your head uh, Generally you want sharpness on the eyes uh, in the middle of the face uh, So then definitely do that and your photo will really start popping out And what you see at the right at the clipping mask I talked about the white is becoming black and what we want is I only want the shape of my body uh, white So once we've done that I think there are some white spots still here and All right, so now you can see it only shows kind of my body. So now we got the photo and I think this is quite a nice result if you compare it to the, uh, the previous photo where we started with. Uh, so now what you want to do is we want to change the image size because usually cameras make really big size photos so you'll get a lot of quality. Qual wow, <laughs> you get a lot of quality. Uh, so you want to go to image and then go to image size and what we know is uh, the perfect photo size for Instagram uh, the width has to be 1080 so 1080 once we do that, do that uh, keep this on automatic and everything like this click OK and it starts resizing to the size you want uh, Instagram has a certain threshold of quality photos because if we were to upload really high resolution and high size photos on Instagram it will take minutes to load a certain picture so you always want to be on the sweet spot of Instagram because otherwise if it's bigger Instagram starts to compress your photo and you will lose a lot of quality so always stay on this size once we've done that we now have the photo and then there's only one thing to do which is export and you just go to file you go to export you say export as so this is the last part we want to be doing first of all you 
want to change PNG to JPG. This is the general format for photos and it keeps the best quality uh, and also Instagram likes it if you use this type of uh, formats. Then also make sure it's converted to sRGB. You don't have to understand what it is but for Instagram it's really good. Uh, so make sure to check that and then export all. And then you go to save it where you want. I'm going to save it. And then it starts exporting and then we can go check the end result. So this is our new photo and this was the old photo. And I'm going to show you the difference. So this was the old photo I'm starting to open now and this is the new photo. Old one, new one. There we go. Just look at the difference. So that's generally what you want to do. Uh, it really brings out your photos really well. Uh, and if you compare it with this for mobile formats, it just looks so much better and you're gonna get so much more likes, so much more comments and it just, it also really fun to do and you can also create your very own style. So this is how I do it. It might not be the most professional thing, but I'm still learning. I think I started doing this like three months ago. So I'm really learning, but for you guys, it's, it's not that hard and you can see the difference. It's a massive impact. So I hope this really helped you guys. Uh, and also a quick side note, uh, besides this, and we're ending this video here, but I'm giving an introduction on next videos, uh, but I'm planning to create an Instagram account from scratch and documenting my process on getting 10,000 Instagram followers. So be sure to check that out, it will be the next video, but I'm going to start that process. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching again. I hope this really helps and I'll see you guys in the next video with the Instagram growth. See you guys in the next one.